Cherry Ghost, people help the people. Right, you probably noticed I'm not quite as animated as usual. Um, that's because I'm in a bad way. Um, so, I was having a lovely day, went for a walk, Met up with um, a lovely charity, Dogs on the Street. Scruffled some dogs. Came back. Went to the gym. Had, uh, had lunch. Lentil soup. Thanks for asking. Had a nap. Uh, thought, oh, I'll, um, I'll do a bollocks gang tonight. Tweeted that. Brilliant. Went for a run about four. Tied my shoe up. Back went. Agony. Couldn't walk. Took me ages to. I don't even, I don't even made it to the end of the street. And it's that thing when you're in agony and you can't walk, but you don't want to look weird to anyone. So. <laughs> I wanted to lie down and scream, get me a fucking ambulance, right? But <laughs> I I made it back, came and said, my back's gone. Laid on the floor, took some naproxen, which we always got because the last time a back goes or toothache or something, right? that's meant to relax it. Tried to walk, couldn't walk. Uh, gets to five. I think, oh, I've got to do the bollocks gang. I'm in agony, still sweating, still in my workout gear. So Jane helps me get undressed. I get into the shower, then getting dressed. Even with two of us getting dressed is a bit of a chore. And also, because I'm moving weird, and every couple of seconds going, ah, 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 like we're not able to stand up right. The cat is sort of looking at me, going, what the fuck's going on? Which made me laugh. Which, like, oh, right. Um, and then uh, got dressed. Right, fucking hell. I made it here into the chair. Jane had to sit this up. I'm sat in the chair going, move that, put that there. <laughs> God, right. So, so I'm here. Um. This is why I know I'll end up in a fucking bucket one day. This is this is it. So I'll be like this. I've got, I've got fucking tennis book tomorrow. That's got to be cancelled. Thank fuck I haven't got a gig. Oh. Next next tour after this one, I'm doing it sitting down. I'm changing the genre. It's not stand up. It's fucking sit down. Hello everyone. Um, uh. I can't lean forward to read. <laughs> I can't see your comment. Oh, right. I've got a weightlifter's belt on. Right. Right. Oh. Right. Right. <sighs> I'm out of breath just because moving hurts. Going around like a fucking gorilla. Oh. So, uh, anyway. <laughs> Good to see you. I'll do some of your questions. These might take on a whole new meaning. Right. Oh, I can't fucking see. I can't lean forward to see. Oh, I can't lift up the laptop. Right. Um, <laughs> so, right, this happens now and again. It's probably happened 10 times significantly in the last 30 years. And then I get little warnings here and there. And it's always when I don't. Well, it's rarely when I'm in the gym or doing something. It's usually fucking putting a toothbrush back or putting the plug in the bath, doing a fucking shoelace up, right? So it gets you unaware when you're not warmed up, right? And the first time it happened was an injury. I was playing, we were on holiday, 
it might have been the last holiday we had. It was like 25, 30 years ago. We went to Italy. And I think the first day I was playing tennis. And it went. And I, the first time it went, was it was unbelievable. I was arched. I thought I'd broken my back. I'm screaming in agony. No one speaks English. So they got me to my room. Some woman came, injected me with summer. She wasn't a nurse or a doctor, just some <laughs> woman who worked there. I didn't care. I didn't fucking ask for her credentials. I didn't know it was, I didn't even know what was in the needle. So that's how much pain I was in. And I was on the floor and just in agony, like, like shouting in agony for hours, right? And then whatever she injected me with <laughs> kicked in. <laughs> um, and I, I was like that for a couple of days. For the first 24 hours, maybe 40 hours, I couldn't move. So uh, Jane was getting me... <laughs> it hurts to laugh. I'm sorry, mate. So <laughs> Jane was getting me Budweiser's at the minibar bottles, open them for me. I was drinking the Budweiser and weeing in the bottle, right? And, uh, and Jane was emptying them, but <laughs> well, she came to empty the bottle and she went, oh, can I leave that for a minute? I went, why? She went, it's still warm. <laughs> Cracking holiday for Jane. After the, after the second day, I think I could sort of hook myself over Jane and sort of shuffle. She, I was like a fucking rucksack. Right? <laughs> She'd get me to the toilet. Um, and then I think I could sort of hobble around by the third day. And then every time after that, it's never been as bad. Uh, the worst ones, I'm usually up and about, like hobbling after the first day and then, you know, just got to be careful. And then it, then I forget about it for six months or a year. Do you know what I mean? And then, oh. <laughs> right, questions. Susie Hope, can you please bring back cock in a drain? <laughs> Tonight, my suggestion is Derek and Kev walking by. I can't fucking walk, can I? Right. So Derek and Kev walking along. Derek. What? Look. It's a cock in a drain. What? So that was <laughs> anyone who's tuned in for the first time. How did that start? So a cock in a drain started that I was spoofing Bad observational, you know, like people say, uh, uh, I think a weird stuff, you know, like, um, uh, well, how would Margaret Thatcher go to the fishmongers? It'd be something like this. So I was spoofing that and did the most ridiculous thing. Celebrities walking past, seeing a cock in a drain, right? So that's just an update. Of, oh. oh, fucking hell. It... This is a weird video, isn't it? Just watching a man in agony. Just watching a man in agony, waiting for death, trying to be funny. <sighs> if you lived for eternity, well, that's never going to happen, is it? Luckily. This is from Leslie. If you lived for an eternity and was asked to choose the age you would live forever and ever, what age would you pick? Oh, okay, so, well, before I did my back in, I think I was about 30, so it'd be, so do you mean an age that I was, that was the best age I'd been, or I could still be me now, but I'd have the, the, the biological body of, a, of my 20-year-old self, or 28-year-old self, or, or whatever, or do you mean... I've got to be the age that I was with all that came with that. Like, 
I'm I'm 24 again, but I'm on the dole eating nothing but beans. If it's it's like I am now, will you choose your what would be my peak my peak fitness? It probably would be about 28 for a man, wouldn't it? In terms of like speed and strength and 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 youth. I don't know. Uh, if it's got to be and everything that comes with it, um, it would be a lot later. It, you know, like, I don't know. I, my, I, 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 my 50 year old self, I'd say was, had a better life than my 18 year old self, if you know what I mean. So it depends. At the moment, I'm just, just hope I don't live much longer. <laughs> oh, it's hard to concentrate. Um, I apologise. Let's get through this. That's ten minutes. I don't. I might not make the half hour, guys. But uh, Bella, I have a few nicknames that my mum and dad call me. For example, Belbo Baggins, Bellatron, and for what I've rolled in. Uh, Fox poo, Bella smells. Bella smeller, Bella smeller. Did you, do you have nicknames? Uh, I didn't really. At school, they couldn't do a lot. I think gerbil, gervais, gerbil. Oh, that was about it, really. Gerb, uh, not really. Um, now and again, I don't even notice that anymore, but like when I've got, if I go out, I, I go say, see ya, bye. She goes, bye, fatty. I bye. Just like it's normal. <laughs> no. Bye, Fatso. Is that a nickname? Oh, God. Joey. Ah. Ah, Joey, you awaken to the news. You will live the rest of your life as one of the Mr. Men. It would be an improvement, wouldn't it? I mean, Mr. Useless Fucking Cunt would be an improvement to the way. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They missed a trick there, didn't they? What's his name? Hargreaves. Mr. Useless Frank. Oh, I can't bend off. I can't cross my legs. Oh, God. Oh. Uh, um, your options are Mr. Muddle, yeah, Mr. Tall. Well, I'm about an inch short at the moment, and my spine's collapsed. Uh, Mr. Nosy. I assume Mr. Muddle gets things all muddled up, does he? Get says the wrong thing. I'm, I can't remember. Mr. Tall. Mr. Nosy. Does he just go interfere? Or has he just got a big nose? Is he great at smelling stuff? Or is... Do people go, Fuck, mind your own fucking business? Um, probably that one. <laughs> my nose is still growing your nose nears I assume that's because it's got cartilage in it and cartilage keeps does it oh this isn't fun for you is it this must be awful to watch you know what I mean like when you find like a an injured frog and you know, oh, you can't do anything with it. You can't save it. It's dying. You can't take it to the vet because the vet will go, would you bring a fucking frog in for? <laughs> Although I'd want to. <laughs> so you don't know what to do, do you? It's just horrible to watch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why am I doing this? I don't need to do this. Oh. I should be lying in a fucking heap, drinking wine. Right. Oh, titch. Oh, I meant to bring your book in to show people. Oh. If we stopped eating chickens, would they then evolve so they could fly? <laughs> Love titch. Oh, and did you, what did you think of Mummy's book? I thought it was great, Titch. I did, I intended to show it. 
but uh, I forgot because I was I was crawling round the house like a fat gorilla. <laughs> um, the chair, this chair is not even that comfortable when you haven't got a bad back. So I'm having to keep my arm straight to press my spine against the back like that, and I've got my elbow there. Get used to it, Rick. Um, no, I, well, no, chickens can fly a bit, can't they? They sort of flap around. Now, I assume, I assume they never flew unless we selectively bred it out of them. But they're very primitive, aren't they? They're probably like early, you know, straight from lizard to flappy thing. Because there was a time when sort of, lizards their scales became sort of feathers and they could flap a bit and glide and you know run run up trees better aided by flappiness <laughs> not a zoologist so i don't know if i've ever flown um uh but no i don't know what the evolution would be i mean they, they it, it depends what's right for them isn't it it's not there's, there's not an aim to evolution I'd have thought I'd have thought flight would be a pretty much an advantage to to everything that wanted to do it, but then you can't get too heavy, and sometimes heavy's an advantage for size. Uh, you know, it's better to be big and tough. Like a hippo doesn't need to fly away from shit, does he? Think how big the wings a hippo would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I can't concentrate at the moment. Oh, it's horrible. You forget how much you rely on your fucking spine. But you don't really do. You? you don't think about it. It's not it's not a revelation, is it, that if your spine's fucked, you go it's tougher to get around, isn't it? I could win the Nobel Prize for that. Just put that in. If your spine is fucked, it's much harder to get around. Oh, I'm out of breath where I'm so tense all the time. You know what I mean? <sighs> okay, now. I don't complain now. I just get on with it. Uh, Leopold and Love Day. If you were to write a song about Pickle, how would it go? And what would you call it? Can you sing it? I haven't got a song, have I? Now, now's not the time, Leopold and Love Day. Um, we, uh, we, we sing everything. I'll go to the, I'll just go, I'll go I'm going to get a fucking beer. <laughs> go around, I'm singing. So then we replace words to classic songs. Like, um, like, like Pretty Woman. Or obviously, Little Pickle, walking down the street, Little Pickle, with a furry feet. That do, that counts as a song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Scarlet, I love all seasons because each one brings new sights and smells. That's true. So do I, I like the change in seasons. Especially love scenting after thunderous rain on a hot day. Yeah. Do you have a favourite season? I think the first thing that came to mind there, I, I do like all seasons. Yeah. Um, I, 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 you know, obviously... The one I don't like much is rain. Whatever, if it's raining, any season, it sort of ruins it. You don't like wet clothes and stuff. Um, so, yeah, the rainy seasons, whatever that is, isn't good. I love spring because you're coming out of winter and uh, summer's great if it's nice. But my favourite is probably, I'd be specific here, I'd say an Indian summer. Like if September and October are sunny and sort of, warm that's perfect for me a 70 75 degree september october i i, I absolutely love that the leaves are falling or changing it feels like a bonus um so yeah that would be that would be my favorite season oh daniel is afterlife three the end end or will it lead to a special I mean, you're lucky that 
I'm, I finished after life three because the way I'm feeling at the moment, <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I planned this to be the end. Yeah. Never say never. Um, but I, I need an awful lot of persuasion and, um, and this is, this is a lovely, no spoilers, but it's a, it's a, I'm not going to say whether, what, what it is, but it's, it's a perfect ending. It's a great ending. Um, and it's more of an ending than I've ever done before because I went into it thinking it was the end, if you know what I mean. So 99% sure it's the end. And when you see it, I think you'll agree with me. Oh, Mick, more and more, I notice the tragedy in your comedy. Even Brent was a bit of a sad tragic, yeah. Do you think that coming from a normal council house background put you in good stead for this type of writing? Seeing humour in darker things? Yeah, definitely. I think, I think that it's, it's no coincidence that, you know, humour comes from uh, some form of struggle or deprivation or, you know, poverty or oppression. Um, uh, I think it was more that everyone got on with it and saw the funny side of it, whatever it was. There was almost a, there was a nobility in poverty. Do you know what I mean? I, uh, I, I never felt, I never felt inferior. Uh, it's, a, it's a celebration, really, that, you know, as I've said before, I think comedy at its best is saying, we're all useless, we're all prats, so it's all right. Um, so, yeah, certainly, and then the more serious side of it, I think, has come more with age, that um, so everyone's suffering, whether whether they, well, I fucking am at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so even when you sort of create a, a twat or a villain, I like to redeem them and, and show why they're like that. You know, everyone's got a story. You should never assume that that everyone's having a better day than you. You don't know what they're going through. You know. Um, so, uh, everyone might have a reason for not being at their best. So I think that, that, that's, that's what it taught me. Yeah. Um, and my mum always said, there's always someone worse off than you. I find that hard to believe at the moment. <laughs> Few of <laughs> honestly, it's facts killing me. Whatever, whatever I was doing, she was, you know, I couldn't moan to go, well, at least you, you know, this and that. I'm like, yeah. Um, if I wouldn't eat my food, she'd say there's a, there's a kid in Africa that is starving. You know? um, so I think that's, that's sort of where it came from, uh, which is why I eat so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Jane, if there was a Ricky Gervais talking doll, what four phrases would it say? And where <laughs> would he have to pull the string? Um, small of the back, classic. Pull the string there. Pull the string there. Uh, what would it say? Uh, what's my, what's my, what do I say? I go, um, fuck's sake. Uh, <laughs> Cracking <laughs> Hamlet, fuck's sake. Uh, I suppose you could have some catchphrases. Are you having a laugh? Or um, Tony's got a few, isn't he, in Afterlife? Um, snot curdling cunt. <laughs> uh, that's a good one, that. Um, what about this? Be kind to animals. For fuck's sake. Uh, snot curdling cunt. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, make that. Um, I should have left it. That's a good one. I should have left it for fuck's sake. It's not curdling, cunt. What was the first one? Oh, God. Oh, I need some stronger painkillers. Um, Gunner. This is like art, isn't it? There's some sort of weird art. Just a man in terrible pain talking shit to fucking cats and dogs. <laughs> I'll say it again. You wouldn't get George Clooney doing this. If George Clooney was in this much pain... <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't be doing this, would he? Oh, he'd release a statement. Um, bollocks, gang. I am sorry that I can't make it. I'm in agony. Oh, Gunner. Easy Rider. Are you Dennis Hopper or Peter Fonda? I've never seen that film. I think Jane said it was the first film she went to see. I, I, I've never seen it. Um... I, I can't answer yet. I like both of those. Uh, Dennis Hopper, I think. Um, he was sort of got sort of grizzled, didn't he? I look a bit like him. <laughs> uh, Carl Wenny, Carl Wee. When you were at school, did you have a little bollocks game sitting at the back of class sniggering? Yeah. What made you laugh the most back at school and what sort of stuff did you get up to? Um, I remember my school days as all being a laugh. Just like from beginning, like as you went to school, the first mate you bumped into, I'd, you know, you'd start mucking around and, you know, pointing things out. And I was, I was the one at the back that would, would try and make people laugh. To try and get them in trouble was like a game. If they laughed, they they'd be heard. The teacher would go, <laughs> ah, greens. He made me laugh, miss. If he asked you to jump on the ridge, would you? Um, so I was that kid. Uh, what did we laugh at? Uh, did you used to do that thing when you had to, a group of you had to like hum really quietly and get louder? I, I bet, I'm sure you did. So you go, hmm. Then a couple of you do it, and the teacher, you could, they could just, and then we had a game. You had to say a swear word and get louder, and the one that could say it loudest, without getting caught. So you go bollocks <coughs> like that, and then so you start off like like bollocks <coughs> and bollocks, <coughs> but and soon you're going bollocks like that. <laughs> Oh, why do you want to wind up teachers? Because they're in charge. They said they're in charge. They came in and they said, we're in charge. That's, that was their first mistake. If they'd come in and said, we're, we're in this together, then things would be different. Oh, okay. Oh. Love, uh, Everett, love Absolutely Mental podcast. But you're surprised that Sam said, since we can't begin to understand consciousness, that this is the basis for him being agnostic about what happens after death. Yeah, I was surprised because he said um, he's not sure that it's nothingness. And I went, really? Uh -uh. And then I, I remember on, this, on another one, I came back and I quizzed him again. And I think I eventually settled on that he means he's we're all ag we're all technically agnostic because we can't know. Um, like technically, as an atheist, I'm also agnostic. So because one deals with um, knowledge and one deals with belief, so we're all agnostic, really. So we're all agnostic because no one knows whether there's a god or not technically. And uh, some agnostic, so everyone's agnostic, right? Some 
some don't know but choose to believe there's a God, the faithful, and some don't know, so choose not to believe there's a God. It's as simple as that. Um, but it's almost like it's an irrelevant question, are you agnostic? Because we're all agnostic, so forget that one. And you've got to say, now what do you believe? What's your best guess? Now I say, my best guess is it's made up nonsense because there's been 3,000 gods and people happen to believe in the god that their mum and dad did or their teachers did or the, the country they were born in did. So I think he means he's agnostic like that, that he's technically agnostic about what happens after the death because no one really knows. But I think he must say that his best guess is nothing. I don't know. I'll have to go back to him and um, put it to him like that. It's like the 13 and a half billion years before you're born. That's what it's like. And that was all right, wasn't it? Last question. Sorry. Oh, I made it through. I made it through. I made it through the rain. Um, Otis, it is impossible to hum while you blow your nose. Is it? I guess so. Your eyes, your eyes close when you sneeze. Yeah. Have you ever tried to keep them open? Well, I did think about that. But then I thought, well, no, it obviously closes for a reason. And I think it's to keep them in your head. So if don't try, don't try and open your eyes when you sneeze, because what might happen is you sneeze and they pop out. That, <laughs> that was my fucking fear. Oh, oh, fuck. Um, that I'd go, I'll show Otis and go, ah, shoot, fucking hell, Otis, you twat. Look what's happened. And I'm there. With fucking bollock face. Oh, right. Thank you. Thank you for your concern. <laughs> I'm going to go and lie in the heat now and drink wine. Fucking cancel tennis tomorrow. And uh, thanks for um, downloading Absolutely Mental. You'll love it. Go to absolutelymental.com. It's $15. So what's that? £10? And it's like 11 podcasts. And we're halfway through the second uh, series recording it. And that'll be out soon. Uh, doing a few gigs there back. I've had to cancel one because of immigration and travel laws. I can't get into America. Um, but I'll do, I'll do some next year. Um, that's the only one at the moment that I've actually had to cancel. And I've postponed it twice before, which is really annoying. Uh, hopefully it'll be sorted out by the time I have to do Canada and America next, which is October. But what can you do, you know? Um, what can you do? You just, uh, you know, I hope it goes away soon with everyone being sensible and fighting it. Science will win in the end. Science will win in the end. Um, is anyone working on something like, like a sort of a robo thing for me? Like just the thing that I sit in, I click into it and it goes like that, like I'm a little robot. So if my back goes, it's fine. I'm just walking around. That'd be good. Uh, what else? Oh, and I'm uh, halfway through editing after like three, and I genuinely think it might be the best thing I've done. Uh, I've uh, pulled out all the stops. I hope you like it. Um, and uh, I'll do one of these when I feel better, when I've got a, a day off. Um, thank you very much, everyone. I'm going to go and lie on the floor drinking wine through a straw. <laughs> Oh, tatty bye everyone. Be nice to animals.